I hereby give the floor to Mrs. Skrigan Kerim to present his vision statement and add some remarks within a time frame of 10 minutes. Mr. Kerim, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished delegates of the Member States, Excellencies, it is a great honor to be today here in a very specific extraordinary capacity as candidate for the position of Secretary General of the United Nations. Allow me at the very outset to commend member states for their determination to improve the process of transparency of the selection of the Secretary General by adopting the Resolution 69321. I would like also to make use of this opportunity, Mr. President, to thank you for your leadership and your contribution, your personal contribution to this process. I firmly believe, as a former President of the General Assembly, that you, as the head of the General Assembly, have done what member states should always praise as a bold and important step forward in a very delicate process of selection and election of the Secretary General. At this moment, I would like to recall also on my fruitful cooperation with Secretary General Ban Ki-moon during my tenure as President of the 62nd Session of the General Assembly. We have done a lot of things together, above all, on promotion of the sustainable development and climate change agenda in the United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this opportunity is unique, so I wouldn't like to repeat what I have said and what I have written in my manifesto. I would like to concentrate and focus on issues which are related to it, but I'm sure of interest of all of you here. Let me share with you my understanding of the United Nations through concrete examples. First of all, before I wrote and submitted to you my manifesto, I had a process of consultation with the whole membership. I visited many capitals. I talked to many member states here in New York, in the headquarters, ambassadors, in various settings, regional groups, other forums which are related to the General Assembly. And based on that, on these consultations, I have prepared my program. Why I'm saying that? It's not a matter of procedure. It's a matter of understanding of the functioning and of the essence of this organization. You first consult, you first talk to people and collect opinions, and then you form your own concept and not the other way around. The second point, transparency. In terms of transparency, I want to share with you that I'm not starting from the scratch participating in this very session. In the preparatory process, before I was elected as President of the United Nations General Assembly, I've consulted member states and prepared the agenda based on these consultations. This is exactly the reason why I believe that this new dimension in selecting the Secretary General has an importance 
for not only improving the process and the dimension of transparency, but also for strengthening the mutual trust among us. In this context, I would like to mention the fact that the Eastern European group, and uh, I belong to this group, has made very clear on various occasions that it firmly believes, and it shared it with all the memberships and member states, it's its turn now for the position of Secretary General of the United Nations. It has a historic meaning. It's not only a matter of respecting the principle of rotation. It has a historic meaning because all of the, of the states of the Eastern European group are member states since the foundation of this organization. And on top of that, these states have always been an important factor in the decision-making of this organization. The geographic balance and the gender balance are very important dimensions of this process, and I therefore believe that uh, in the forthcoming days and months, member states, and especially the Security Council, will know how to act accordingly and, above all, based on the charter of our organization. Mentioning the charter of our organization, I would like also to remind that we have really the moment where we have to abide to the Charter. Enthusiasm is always a good ally when it comes to improvements and of quality of work of the organization, but on the other hand, we have to be also very realistic and to always bear in mind that the Charter is our guidance and our navigation. Talking about navigation, I don't think the role of the Secretary General, and there I disagree with what has been said already these three days here in this room, is to navigate. Navigation belongs to the Member States. The captain of this boat, the Secretary General, has to make sure that his crew is fit, that he is fit, and they can do their part of the job within the division of labor which has been set up by the Charter, as I said. Finally, talking about the agenda. My agenda derives from the priorities of the, this organization of, and what member states have set up. It sets management reform at its top priority, then sustainable development, climate change, and financing development as a top priority, security architecture, human rights and citizen participation, gender equality and education, migration, and finally, a very important task, how to achieve these goals. That means we need appropriate tools to achieve them, and these tools are definitely mediation, promotion of multilateralism, and partnerships. At the very end, I would like to share with you my experience as someone who has been in the business world as CEO, as someone who has been in politics as Minister of Foreign Affairs, someone who has been in diplomacy for 33 years within this organization, and someone who is a professor, university professor. The basic assumption according to my experience, for success in any undertaking is to believe in it. I believe in the United Nations because it is a product of visionary statesmen and their collective wisdom. Based on that, I would like to end in 
say, saying the following. To serve the cause of global peace and security is not a routine exercise. On the contrary, it is about experience, expertise, devotion, passion, and sacrifice. Think of Doug Hammarskjöld, Sergio de Mello, and hundreds of other UN personnel who have paid with their lives holding the blue UN banner high. With that in mind, I stand ready to serve this course if I'm elected. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.